Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 8 of our WCW 1998 save and TW 2020. This is Thunder for January week 3. Uh, we continue the road to sold out. And um, as I mentioned before, I know people kind of previously in the series before we brought it back had been wanting to try to do Nitro and Thunder in the same episode, but just kind of with, you know, we have several different series going on on the channel and um, it's just one where I, I kind of need to do each show separately for now, but as you'll see, our booking is going to change quite a bit uh, after sold out because we're just trying to get through some of these initial storylines. So once we start adding in some different things, which you'll see some changes, um, we may consider going back to doing Nitro and Thunder on the same episode, but, uh, I'll try my best on that. I don't want to offer any promises, but, uh, just based on the schedule and all that. So, uh, let's jump into Thunder here as we are in January week three sold out. It's going to be January week four, so counting this show, uh, three more shows to go until our pay-per-view sold out. We start with the pre-show. It is Conan getting the win over Hoovy, uh, 647. Uh, the Tequila Sunrise does it, 56 overall, so not a bad match here. Uh, but, um, you know, continuing to keep the cruiserweights in the, the rotation here is uh, they're usually featured in multiple segments on the main show, but uh, we get them a match here on the pre-show as well. So Conan... Part of the NWO, as we know, uh, as many people are, <laughs> gets a win on the pre-show. Now, we jump into the main episode, and we start off with a match. And it is Scott Steiner, one half of our WCW Tag Team Champions, getting the win over Dave Taylor, 734. Uh, Steiner, screwdriver, does it 65 for this match. So pretty good uh, here. Good in-ring performance from Scott. He's on the way up. We know that. This is, you know, 1998, and... Uh, there's obviously a lot we can do with Scott Steiner, given his stats and star quality and all that. Uh, but as I said, right now, he is one half of the tag team champions. And we know uh, that is one match that is official, which we'll have a few more on this show. But we know the Steiners are going to defend the tag team titles against uh, two members of the NWO, Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton at Sold Out. So just giving a, a win here for Steiner, give him a little solo action. And uh, that is kind of that. But we won't be done with Scott Steiner on this episode. You'll see him again, I promise. All right, and then we go backstage where we get a promo from Eddie Guerrero, who uh, runs down Ultimo Dragon. Of course, it was revealed on Nitro that uh, it's going to be Dragon who takes on Eddie that sold out for the Cruiserweight title. And you know Eddie. He has something to say about that. Um, we saw his reaction uh, when Gene announced it to him on Nitro. He wasn't very happy, but now Eddie... Sort of backtracked a little bit, uh, very confident here, saying that he knows that uh, Dragon's not going to take his title um, because Eddie, as always, will do anything he needs to do to keep his championship. So uh, Eddie, just running down his opponent here, gets a 64. Eddie's someone else we know. Uh, there's plenty we can work with as he starts his ascent up the card in WCW at this point in 98. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot we, we have in mind for Eddie Guerrero, but his opponent is going to be up next once again, and that is going to be Ultimo Dragon in action. He gets the win over Bobby Eaton, 756. The Dragon Sleeper gets a 50. Once again, for the second week in a row, we've got this note here of uh, the crowd being turned off by having a match uh, between workers they don't have any investment in. Well, I mean, look, this is it's a situation where, as I said previously, I think Ultimo, wait, who did he face? I think he faced Finley on Nitro. Um, I mean, we have to get them there somehow. And so we have to kind of put them in matches to try to get the crowd invested in them somehow. So um, Dragon still in the, what, I mean, upper 30s, low 40s, I think, from a popularity standpoint. Bobby Eaton's not bad. I mean, he's like mid 40s, somewhere in there. And so, um, you know, we just had to we had to put it in there. Dragon still, I mean, his in-ring performance, 66. He's fantastic in the ring. We just need to get his popularity up. So um, this is something that... Again, we really don't have a lot of choices, so we're we have to put him in action, and so I'm I'm fine with taking the knock on this. But it is Dragon getting the win over and over another you know kind of technical wrestler here. Beats Finley last or on Nitro, beats Eaton now in this one. Um, so will that play into the story of his match against Eddie and trying to win that cruiserweight championship? We will find out. But this gets a fifty, not great, but it is what it is. I'm not too concerned. And then speaking of the cruiserweight division, um, it is Chris Jericho who is with Gene again, and we saw this as well, on Nitro with Jericho, um, the del delusional Jericho, we're calling him at this point, um, who said that he wants Malenko to, you know, finally step into the ring with him. And as we know, Malenko has already beaten Jericho in our save, but uh, it is Jericho who's saying that he wants Malenko to finally prove to him that he can beat him. 
Um, and he wants answers here. He, he wants to know, Gene, has, has Malenko answered the challenge yet? Where is he? Why is he backing down? Because he knows he can't beat me. Um, and you're just getting the usual, you know, over-the-top Jericho here uh, saying everything that just is the opposite of what we actually know, which is that Malenko's already beaten Jericho. Uh, but uh, Jericho, fantastic here, 81, great stuff. Um, look, I mean, he's he's got all the skills, and so... Jericho wants answers from Malenko. Is he going to get him? And here comes Malenko, who comes out and says, here I am. You know, Chris, I, I'm here. I accept your challenge. I'll, I'll face you. It's sold out. Um, so uh, that's it. And Jericho is just like, oh, you will, huh? You are going to face me. It's sold out. Okay. And then we just start to see Jericho kind of retreat. So he's like, okay, well, now that I know the match is official, um, I may need to get the hell out of here before Malenko um, comes after me. So... Malenko just simply accepts Jericho's challenge, and so we do have another match added now. To sold out, it will be Malenko versus Jericho for a second time uh, in our save to this point, uh, which again, <laughs> this is all based around Jericho wanting Malenko to prove he can beat him. We've already seen that, so what does Jericho have up his sleeve? Perhaps we will find out. So 64 here for this one. <clears throat> and then it is uh, Randy Savage who is backstage, and uh, Savage as we know, um, has had a lot going on uh, with the whole stuff with Hogan and Luger and everything. And um, Savage says that, you know, he's only focused on Luger at this point because that is a match. We'll also have it sold out. It'll be Randy Savage versus Lex Luger. And he's not worried about Hulk Hogan's power play, um, which we've seen, you know, on Nitro, the finish to Nitro, Hogan wanting Savage to do the right thing, uh, to go out and really, you know, attack Luger, get rid of Luger for the NWO Savage is nowhere to be found, so Hogan has to come out and try to do it himself. Of course, that leads to Sting coming out and sort of thwarting any uh, attack from Hogan. Uh, so Savage, he, he's just kind of you know a, a loner, loner here. Like he's just coming out trying to play up that he's by himself in this thing. He may be part of the NWO, but he is on his own, um, and that is kind of what he's playing up here. So he is um, again not just really yelling at Hogan, but he he's not having anything to do with Hogan's uh, antics here and wanting to kind of pull the strings of the entire NWO. Um, so Savage only focused on Luger. Of course, Savage does well here, 88. Uh, no surprise. Uh, he's great on the mic. We know that. So great stuff here from Savage, and he's going to be in action, and he's going to get a 77 as he gets to win over Ray Trailer. So the, <laughs> the former Macho Man versus Big Boss Man match here for you uh, 80s WWF fans. Uh, as uh, Savage gets to win over Trailer, 10 4 Flying elbow drop does a pretty good chemistry between these two. Not surprised, um, just given the style of workers that they are. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just kind of a win for Savage. It's kind of, you know, continue to push him towards the match with Luger. It sold out. Um, so, Savage gets the win here over Trailer And a pretty good match, 77 overall for this one. And then uh, Booker T, who apparently did not do well without script here. Um, but I, I don't... I think we've had Booker in these promo segments before, and he's been just fine without a script. But... That's the game, we know. So 56 uh, gets it here, and it's um, Booker just saying, you know, Raven can throw anything he wants at him. Uh, and we know now it is, you know, official. We, we found that out on Nitro that Raven challenged Booker to a Raven's Rules match. That sold out for the TV title. Um, so Booker will defend the championship there. And, you know, he's fine with saying that, look, Raven can throw anything at him that he wants. Uh, but he's already beaten, you know, several members of the flock, He's already proven um, that he has what it takes to keep his championship. So he's not concerned. He says he'll be ready um, and that he wants to make sure that Raven knows he's always got some friends too, kind of waiting to help him out. So uh, Booker <clears throat> kind of throwing down, all right, if this turns into you know Raven's flock attacking him because it is a Raven's rules match, there are no rules, um, Booker may have a little help uh, that could kind of help him in this situation. So Booker pretty confident heading into uh, that TV title match, which we've been building up since the start of the save. Booker and Raven uh, at sold out. So 56 for this one. And speaking of Raven, uh, it is Raven and Saturn uh, in action as they get the win over Rick Martell and Jim Duggan, 701, uh, with Raven getting the pin on Martell. Uh, 56 here for this one. We expected to have great chemistry between Raven and Saturn. We do. Uh, this was just a way, kind of, you know, minus just a singles match. We get Raven and Saturn uh, some action here. Of course, Booker beat Saturn last week, but uh, back on track here is the flock, and we see that Saturn and Duggan both off their game. I, I keep looking at it like, I'm going to call these guys jobbers, but 
a lot of the guys that have been getting losses uh, on our shows, uh, which just kind of shows you the state of WCW in 1998, was, you know, a lot of these former WWF, you know, guys like mid Carter or above, you know, we just talked about Ray Trailer. Now we got Martell and Duggan. You know, we had Nightheart on, um, what was it, on Nitro against Ric Flair. So, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of old WWF guys uh, from the 80s and, and maybe early 90s on here. So that's kind of the, the state of our, our roster in WCW right now. But nonetheless, um, it, it is Raven and getting a win here, uh, teaming up with Saturn. It's going to give him a little momentum heading towards that TV title match. And then uh, backstage, it is uh, Regal who comes in, and we, you know, DDP's just standing there, and here comes Regal. Regal's just been a thorn in the side of DDP to this point, just kind of jabbing, sending all these jabs at him, um, all this other stuff. And we know this is another match that's also official uh, for sold out, as it will be DDP taking on Regal, uh, the U.S. Heavyweight Championship on the line, DDP our champion. And Regal just comes up and continues to kind of poke the bear here. He just continues to taunt DDP. And thus far, you know, we've had no sort of physical interaction whatsoever between these two. Well, that changes here because DDP has had enough. And he just goes at Regal, takes a swing at him. We've got a brouhaha on our hands. And that is when we have, you know, a referee's officials come in. They break up this brawl. DDP's had enough. He's not going to stand by and listen to Regal just kind of taunt him uh, week after week now. And so uh ddp hey he's the champ he's had enough and so this just kind of furthers the feud between these two headed towards their match at sold out so 70 pretty good stuff here from these two and then all right here we go if you've been watching this series at this point you know why i'm laughing so as we know by now davy boy smith has uh bolted he jumped ship to the wwf and yet he's still under contract with us until his contract officially starts with the WWF. So, you know what we're doing. Um, we had Regal beat Davey Boy uh, recently in a match, and we had it in, in decisive fashion. I think it was even dominant fashion, just to really gain some popularity for Regal and take down Davey Boy. I got nothing against Davey Boy. I love the guy. But this is business. And as we said, um, we're in a war with the WWF here in this particular save. So we have to do what we have to do. And so, <laughs> what we did on this one as I was thinking, all right, who's someone else we need to really get a good popularity boost to get them where we want to go? Well, we found Rey Mysterio because uh, Rey's still kind of in the low 40s, I think, maybe even upper 30s. Uh, Davy Boy's in the mid 60s, somewhere in there. So we had Rey beat Davy Boy. Um, I'll be honest with you, for no other reason at all, just to have Rey beat Davy Boy um, to gain some popularity. <laughs> and look, like I said, I'm sorry. I, we, we have we have to do what we have to do here. Uh, but Davy Boy is going on to be a big star in the WWF. We need to knock him down a little bit um, in popularity. So, and we need to gain some for Ray. Ray gets the win at 815, gets a 58. I'm not even worried about the match. Um, we did do decisive finish. So I didn't, I didn't do the domination note here, okay? I didn't, I didn't do dominate because I just, you know, want to give Davy Boy a little bit on the way out. But I think, I may be wrong, but I think this is his last show. If it's not, as I've said before, we're going to keep doing this. Like, they're going to be people that continue to beat Davy Boy. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure who's going to be next in line, but... Thus far, Regal and Mysterio have both gotten a little bump in popularity out of beating Davy Boy. Now, Davy Boy, absolutely pissed, extremely unhappy. You get that note. I don't care for the second time because, again, he's on the way out. And sorry, this is just this is how we're doing it, guys. As we said, we're in a war with the WWF here. We got to do what we got to do. So 58 overall. Ray hopefully will gain some popularity. We'll look at that um, soon. But I think he'll get a little popularity bump out of beating Davy Boy here in decisive fashion. All right, and then it is Bret Hart, uh, who's probably not happy about what we're doing to Davey Boy, but sorry, Bret. Um, Bret's with Gene, and uh, as we saw on Nitro, it was Flair getting the win over Jim and Hart, as we mentioned. And uh, Bret, you know, talks about respect. And he says, look, the reason he's in WCW for the first place is because he didn't get treated with respect uh, at his former employer. He knows how good Ric Flair is. He respects Ric Flair. And he saw, you know, what Flair can still do in the ring when he beat his former tag team partner, Jim Neidhart, on Nitro. And Brett just says, I will not be taking Ric Flair lightly because I know what's at stake. My shot at the WCW World Heavyweight Championship at Super Brawl is at stake uh, in my match, you know, against Flair at Sold Out. As we know, the winner of that match now goes on to face the winner of Hogan and Sting. That'll be our main event at Super Brawl. Um, so Brett knows what's at stake here. His first ever WCW match, a lot on the line. And uh, just kind of, you know, 
he respects Ric Flair. That's what he says here. Gets a 78. So good stuff here from Brett. And uh, yeah, we are headed towards what I think will probably be a, a fantastic match between Bret Hart and Ric Flair. All right. If you thought Alex Wright was going to end the streak, uh, sorry to reveal that you were wrong because it is Goldberg getting the win over Alex Wright. 501. The Jackhammer does it. 56. Um, Goldberg off his game. Still gets a 65 for an in-ring performance. So we'll take that. Um, but yeah, just line it up. Keep lining him up for Goldberg right now. Um, you know, he's not in the world title picture or anything like that. We haven't catapulted him up that far, but I think, you know, just based on the stats, everything, um, Goldberg will be a big part of our plans moving forward in this 1998 save. So yeah, uh, he's, he gets the win over Alex right here. I don't pick a number 93 and 0. I don't even know. 472 and 0. It doesn't matter at this point. Goldberg's still undefeated, uh, as he gets the win over Alex Wright. And then, before we head into our main event, which uh, it will be, the Outsiders, Scott Hall and Kevin Ash taking on their two opponents that they will have in singles matches at Sold Out, the Giant and Larry Zabisco. Um, it is Hall and Ash guaranteeing their victories at Sold Out. You know, they've talked about it. they said, look, we know there's a lot of people talking about the NWO right now. Um, we haven't had, you know, we, we've kind of been in a, a rough patch here recently for the NWO. We've had some issues. You know, you got Savage running around like a maniac. Um all kinds of stuff, but they say what stays the same is us at the top, and they guarantee that they're going to get their victories over their opponents. So they just kind of run down the giant Larry Zabisco here, um, just you know, Hall and Nash being Hall and Nash. So that's kind of what we we play up here and get to 77. Uh, so good stuff from these two, as you would expect on the mic, and that does lead us into our main events, which gets a 73. So not too bad, um, as it is the Outsiders, Hall and Nash. Getting the win over Larry Zabisco and the Giant, uh, but it comes via countout because, uh, of course, NWO involvement, right? <laughs> Here comes Buff Bagwell, who interferes in the match, and that allows uh, him to kind of keep the Giant distracted and is able to kind of hold off the Giant to not allow him to get back in the ring. So a cheap countout victory here for the Outsiders uh, via interference from Buff Bagwell. We also have Scott Norton come out, so... As for the match, gets a 73. Uh, you know, I wasn't expecting a necessarily a masterpiece, uh, but uh, the, we're playing up more the fact that Buff did interfere here and caused the count out, and that leads to, <laughs> you, you know I love these. Um, here comes, you know, the whole crew, as we've got the Giant now uh, brawling with Buff and Norton because they came out and interfered. Of course, these two are out. Zabisco's already out there. Here come the Steiner brothers. Um, so our tag team champions come out because we know, as we said, uh, they'll have their match against Bagwell and Norton, so they're making sure uh, going to be no involvement here. So uh, just chaos everywhere. You know, we've had some of these uh, chaotic sort of endings um, to, to different shows. Of course, we're not done yet, but um, this is just kind of playing up all of these different, you know, elements that are intertwined here uh, with the different stories involved and all that. So uh, four on four brawl, <laughs> and that's just chaos everywhere. But hey, that's WCW in 1998. So it gets a 64, not great. But um, obviously, again, when you have Buff getting involved, Norton's out there, of course the signers are going to come uh, to the rescue here uh, for the Giant and Larry Zabisco. So 64 for that one. And then uh, we get all that cleared out of the way. So <laughs> we get all the NWOs out of there. Um, we get the good guys out of the ring. And then we get a video package playing up uh, the road to this uh, Hollywood Hogan versus Sting match. It's sold out that will be for the vacant WCW World Heavyweight Championship. We look at all the events that led to this. Of course, this controversy at Starcade, um, and you know, not getting a clear winner in that match, and all everything that's kind of happened since then. Uh, and so we have this video rolling. We're looking at everything, and then as this video is playing, this gets an 87. Um, all of a sudden, on the microphone, we just hear, "Cut that video! Cut it!" And here comes Hogan, who is coming out, and he's got his hand just holding Gene Okerlund and kind of pulling him out to the stage. Um, so Hogan's bringing out Gene. And then we have Hollywood Hogan just going off here. Hogan's spitting everywhere. He's just, he's not happy. And Hogan uh, promises that he is going to finish Sting at Sold Out. He's tired of all this mess. Um, Sting getting involved in his business on Nitro whenever Hogan came out to attack Luger. Um, he's tired of dealing with Savage. He's tired of all this. He wants everyone to remember that he's still Hollywood Hogan, and he's still the founder of the NWO, 
the largest, you know, strongest organization in wrestling. And Hogan just kind of just going off here again. He's just, Hogan's kind of losing it uh, because he's tired of dealing with everything. He's tired of everyone kind of intervening in what he wants done. And so he does promise that he is going to finish off Sting at Sold Out. So a pretty strong promo here from Hogan, 95. Um, and it is just kind of showing almost Hogan hitting that breaking point now. Everything going on with Savage. The NWO has kind of been struggling a little bit. Sting still getting involved and kind of, you know, stopping him from beating down all his nemesis here, um, or all his big rivals. So just kind of Hogan uh, perhaps reaching a breaking point here as we get closer to the match at Sold Out. So finish, we finish strong, 95 here for this one. And we do get an 81, so that's going to increase our popularity in nine regions. Um, you know, not bad, but as we know, in this particular save, like, we need to be hitting the mid-80s regularly uh, if we're going to keep gaining ground here uh, because, you know, our overall popularity now is in the, in the mid-80s. What is it, 85, 86, somewhere in there. So we need to keep trying to hit that. And as I said, that's where you'll start to see a bit of a shift after sold out. Once we get through this initial pay-per-view cycle, you'll see a shift a bit in, in how we book things and just kind of how some things are set up, uh, which again, you'll you'll understand completely once we get past sold out. Um, because as I said, this is a game where we're trying to really beat the WWF and we're at war here and we have to do some things we need to do to get those high ratings. So you will see a little bit of a shift after sold out. So good show here, 81 overall. And let's see what we need to get to before we wrap up. All right, so Thunder, positive show. Um, didn't strike gold, but that's okay. 81, we'll take it. Um, there's going to be Saturday night. We did tape that. Um, <laughs> that wasn't a great show. Lukewarm. Um, doesn't seem to particularly have gone down well. I don't even remember what we had on Saturday night. It wasn't great. Um, yeah, so I, I. by the way, I, I did the, the auto booker on most of this. And, well, I mean, we just left some of these jobber matches here. Uh, and they didn't go over well. But we did have Jericho beat Chavo. Um, I, I did put that one in myself. But... Yeah, Saturday night, just kind of an auto-booker show, so I wasn't really concerned about it. I'll, I'll maybe put it together on my own moving forward, but just kind of in a hurry, so we just did that. Um, there is something to note here. Uh, we do have some mail. Oh, Ultimo Dragon. New Japan has made an offer to Ultimo Dragon. Well, he's going to be in our Cruiserweight Championship match, so I hope uh, that he is not going to be... Uh, he is. He's on a handshake deal. For some reason, I thought Ultimo was... Um, was not on a handshake deal. So we need to try to get Ultimo Dragon uh, in a big deal here. Uh, he has one other offer. And 40, my goodness, 61000 a month. Holy cow, there's no way we're going to be able to compete with that. So we may be losing Ultimo Dragon. Um, but again, look, it's just, as I said, this is a very aggressive save in terms of uh, we know what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a lot of big companies. And I just think it's one where it's going to happen. I mean, I'm going to try to make him an offer. But, um, yeah, we're not having as good an offer as that. There's no way we're going to be able to match uh, the 61000 per month. Good Lord, New Japan's got all kinds of money here. Um, I mean, look, there, there's no way. Like, we're not going up to that. We, we go up to 30000 maybe. Um, what if we just do events and A shows? I mean, look, bonuses. I, we'll give him 30% of his merch. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, it's it's not going to happen. So there you go, guys. Like, it's official. Well, there's no way we're bringing back Ultimo Dragon here. And this is just an oversight on my part. We should have already signed him. Um, but we got a lot of handshake deals. And, yeah, this was just one we didn't look at. So um, we're going to make this offer official. But we, we may try to sweeten this up a little bit. Um, I'm not going to do that on this because you guys don't want to sit around and watch me try to navigate a contract here with Ultimo. But I'm going to leave that in there. Thunder gets a 2.29. Um, so Ultimo Dragon uh, <laughs> could, could be on his way out just like Debbie Boy Smith. Uh, but everyone else, we've kind of we have gone through the roster. If you remember previously and watched our um, some of our previous episodes, we did go through the roster and make sure we kind of try to get everyone under exclusive contracts. Um, but I guess Ultimo was just one of those we we just overlooked and just didn't do it. Um, so he's headed to New Japan. I can guarantee you that right now. There's no way we're going to get him back. So um, losing someone else on the roster, but uh, hey, you know you know what we got to do then. <laughs> Rey Mysterio's got to beat him on Nitro before he heads out. Uh, so in, in a squash fashion, this is what we got to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, New Japan. I'm sorry, WWF. Uh, as we know, I mean, this is, look, we're in war here. Uh, so we're right in the middle. We need want to be right here. We're number two. We got number three trying to take away our guys. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens, but there you go. There's thunder for January week three. As I said, uh, on the next episode, it'll be January week four. 
It'll be our go home week uh, as we get ready for sold out, uh, which will take place uh, week four of January on Sunday. And so uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the WWE 2021 and AEW 2022 saves we have on the channel. Lots of good stuff uh, on those particular ones. And like I said, if you're enjoying the 1998 one here in WCW, I think you'll you'll be happy to know that that things will start to pick up pretty significantly. Like I said, after sold out. Just as our first pay-per-view cycle, we just wanted to get some of the current stories that were already kind of in place, which, you know, our look at our storyline, some of the ones that were already there, we added some ourselves, but um, then we're, things are really going to start to pick up, and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about once we get past sold out. Um, so uh, that is uh, Thunder, and like I said, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And on the next episode, um, hopefully Ultimo Dragon will still be on our roster um, and, uh, hopefully no one else is left WCW by the time we get to the next, uh, episode. And maybe we'll steal some people away from the WWF. We'll see. But on the next episode, it will be Nitro for January week four. <laughs>